We just talked about emphase and how it's split up into two parts, mitosis and cytokinesis. So what I want to talk about are those five stages of mitosis. Now they are abbreviated by their first letter. So I talked about prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And if you take the first letters of them, you could remember the order in which they go. So you learn probably PMAT in middle school, but we have prometaphase as a in-between step between prophase and metaphase. So it's pronounced PPMAT. That's interesting. It's where your dog goes to the bathroom, right? The PPMAT? Okay, so let's talk about it and what happens in each one of these phases. Looking at the picture, this is showing, we are going to be talking about this green section right here. This is M phase, which includes mitosis right here. And then this last part is cytokinesis that I will end with. Everything in the blue was interphase that we looked at. All right, so zooming in on that, we're gonna start with right after G2, the last part of interphase, we're going to go into mitosis, prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and the last part of emphase, cytokinesis. Before I talk about it, please remember that even and you're going to draw some pictures on your notes. When you draw the pictures of these cells, the only things that we're going to draw are the important parts for cell division. Please remember that all those other organelles like the Golgi and the rough ER and the smooth ER and the mitochondria, they are still all there, but we're not going to represent them in our pictures just to make life a little bit easier. So things that we're going to talk about, the cell membrane. We'll also talk about, talk about the cell wall when we talk about uh, this process in plant cells. We need to know about the nucleus, the different forms of DNA and the DNA structure. And then the main organelle that we're going to be focusing on are the centrioles because they're going to actually help divide the nucleus into two nuclei. All right, so on your note packet, start at the top in the box that says interphase. Now, to the left of interphase, there's a circle that's connected to that box. Please, you're going to be drawing a picture. The picture is something should look something similar to this. I try to pick very simple pictures. And then in the box that says interphase, you're going to write down the key things that happen during that time. We detailed interphase a little bit more on the previous page, so this is just a synopsis of what happens during interphase. So first thing, it's normal work of the cell, and the DNA is going to be all unwound in chromatin, and here it is. There's all that crazy chromatin all over the place, like this. So all you have to do is really this inside the nucleus, and then draw your cell membrane, and then you need to draw these things called centrioles. Um, I call them centrioles in this class. The technical term is a centrosome. There's a difference because the centrioles are part of a centrosome. We're just going to call them centrioles and make life easier because that's what we learned with the cell parts. And part of the interphase is that DNA will get replicated during that S phase part. So that's pretty much a synopsis of interphase. So draw this picture, write down these notes, and then let's talk about the phases of mitosis. And by the way, the, these are I show a picture that you should draw, and then I show a picture of what it really looks like under a microscope. The cells spend most of their time in interphase. Make sure to pause if you need more time. All right, so it's going to prepare for division, and here's the division. The first part of mitosis is called prophase, and there's a couple things that I need you to know about prophase. First of all, that notice that the chromosomes are not all strangly and chromatin anymore. They start to become condensed and coil up around those histone proteins and form these things called sister chromatids. They're already doubled because we copied them in, in um, S phase. So we went from one chromosome to this doubled chromosome thing, this is on the board and in your notes on a previous page, and that's what these purple things are actually inside of there, the doubled copied chromosome. And the sister, we call them sister chromatids, each one of these sides being a copy of the other, so they're sisters, identical sisters. Now these things called centrioles right here, they start to begin to migrate to opposite poles of the cell, and they start to make these lines in between them. Those lines are actually called mitotic spindle microtubules. I will usually just call them the microtubules or the spindle microtubules, but they help in mitosis, so that's where they get their name from. And this is what's happening in prophase. After prophase, we have prometaphase. Prometaphase, we have a couple things happening. First of all, you can see that the picture is a little bit different. The nucleus, there used to be a nucleus all the way around this DNA. 
It's not there anymore. You could see kind of the fragments of where it was left. Next, it says the spindle microtubules elongate. They attach to the centromeres of the sister chromatids and then pull them back and forth. So those, these long microtubules are attaching. Here's our, here's our chromosomes right here. Okay. They're going to attach. This is a centromere of the chromosome. The microtubules are, tubules are going to attach to the centromeres of the sister chromatids, one on each side. They should. So you can see that this one's attached right here, and this one's actually attached to the other side. What they're technically attaching to is part of the centromere called the kinetochore, and so that's just a specific part of the centromere. I care that you know centromere, not so much kinetochore. I'm not going to test you on this word. But anytime you see it, just refer to the centromere. Now they start to yank them back and forth and start to make these move because they're going to have to line them up in the middle in the next phase. And you can see that the centrioles are all the way at the opposite ends of the poles as well. So you could kind of imagine what's going to happen. All these blue beautiful chromosomes are up there, those green things and the lines, those are the centrioles with the mitotic spindle fibers that are being formed that are attaching to them. All right, after that, prometaphase, metaphermidal. So in this metaphase, what we're going to do is we're going to line up all these chromosomes right along almost the equator, called the metaphase plate, the equator of the cell. So all chromosomes. There's only four in this cell, but in our cells we have how many? 46. So there would be actually 46 chromosomes lined up along this equator if it was our cell. They're just showing a simple example with four chromosomes. Um, and that's pretty much the main thing that happens during that. The centrioles are definitely at the poles, and the chromosomes are lined up in the middle. Middle for metaphase. Meta means middle. It's a prefix. After that, we go into anaphase. Ana means away. So the chromosomes are going to be pulled away from their partner. They're going to shorten. And when they shorten, you could see that they're pulled away from their sister. And so they're going to get yanked in to where the chromosomes or excuse me, the chromosomes. The chromosomes are going to go to where the centrioles and be yanked this way away from their partners. So they were lined up down the middle, and now they're going to go away from their partners. We're splitting up the copies. All right. Kind of like fishing. Think of this as a fishing pole, the centrioles as a fishing pole, the mitotic spindles, the microtubules as a line, and think of the chromosomes as a fish. And when you catch a fish, you have to reel it in. So the centrioles are reeling in the chromosomes. And you could actually see that happening very nicely here. And you could see kind of there's a separation between where they used to be down the middle. After that, the last part is called telophase. And in telophase, we have a couple things happening. This one happens in conjunction with the last part of M phase called cytokinesis. But let's talk about telophase first. So a copy of each chromosome is at each end of the cell. We could see that these purple lines are definitely on one distinct side of the cell. The cell got really long and ob oblong, too. Spindle fibers break down. Notice in the picture, there's no more spindle fibers. We're done with them. They're going away, those microtubules that were attached. Now we need to reprotect the DNA, so you're going to start to get a nuclear envelope, a new nucleus around where the DNA is. And then finally, the chromosomes start to uncoil back into chromatin. You could see that these are not as condensed as before. They're kind of stringy now. So that is the chromatin that's starting to form. And eventually, we'll get the full nucleus, and we'll get all that chromatin inside of here eventually, which will probably be the next picture. As that's happening, the cell starts to pinch in right there and right there. This pinching in is called cytokinesis. Cytokinesis is the splitting of the cytoplasm and the rest of the organelles. So it will happen simultaneously, and you could see how it's going to just split and pinch right in half. And we're going to get two new identical cells. Cytokinesis, when we're dividing the cytoplasm, and it's happening during the endotelophase, it happens a little bit different in plant and animal cells. So I want to talk about the difference that it happens in plants versus in animal cells. This is on the next page of your paper under cytokinesis. There is one more picture that we have to turn back for in a minute. 
depending if it's a plant or animal, we know that plant cells have a cell wall, so we have to kind of deal with that. If you're an animal cell, you don't have a cell wall, so it's a lot easier. They make just something called a cleavage furrow. Cleavage furrow is just when the cell pinches in, and it looks like it's just going to pinch all the way through, and that's why it's called a cleavage furrow, just splitting the cell membrane. But in plants, you have not only the cell membrane, but you have a cell wall, and so you actually have to build a new cell wall. While it's being built, it's called the cell plate. So you could see that right down here, this dotted line, that's the beginning of a new cell wall called the cell plate. It will eventually get thicker and thicker until it makes it all the way through and separates both these new cells with the two new nuclei inside. And then you get two new plant cells. So animal cells only have to do the cleavage furrow, but protists and fungi and plants and even bacteria have to make new cell walls every time that they make their cells. So here are the phases. Here's interphase, prophase. DNA starts to um, coil up. Our, nuclei, our centrioles are starting to move away from each other, making the microtubules. Oops. And then we have the nucleus going away. The chromosome is fully formed. The centrioles at the opposite poles. The microtubules got longer. Oops, again. And they're attaching to the chromosomes. Metaphase, they line the chromosomes up in the middle. Anaphase, they get pulled away from each other as they, the microtubules shorten. And then finally, we're all separated with our DNA, so we have to reprotect it with the nucleus, and then it starts to relax and uncoil into chromatin. The spindle fiber microtubules go away, and we start to pinch inward and pinch the rest of the cell. So these are some cool pictures. This first one is prophase. The purple is the DNA or the chromosomes, and the pink stuff is the spindle fiber microtubules and the centri centrioles. You can see that they're lined up in the middle here. Here they're getting pulled away, so that's anaphase, and then telophase with the two new nuclei and a pinching inward with the cytoplasm. So in the end, if you go back one page, the very last thing that you should end with actually was a cytokinesis picture. And so here's our nucleus with our chromatin. Our centrioles are still there. And these are two new identical cells that are, should not be any different than what you started with, except that they're smaller in size and they're brand new. They're, they're going to each start the cell cycle back in interphase, specifically G1. The very last thing I want to talk about, because we're on this page, if you go back to the next page with cytokinesis and prokaryotic cell division, Prokaryotic cells, they don't have a nucleus, so they don't need to do the mitosis part because mitosis is division of the nucleus. They just have to do the splitting part. They copy their DNA and they split. They copy their DNA and they split. That's all they do. So that process is actually called binary fission. Binary means two, fission means to split, splitting into two. And the picture that you have to fill in is this one. All you really have to do is show squiggly lines for the DNA being copied and then the cell splitting and making two new identical smaller cells. And that's all it is. And these are just pictures of protists and bacteria that can do this at a fairly quick rate. Only takes about 20 minutes for, for bacteria to go through this process. That's why you get sick so quick from um, maybe strep throat, that bacteria that gives you strep throat. It divides quickly, and so the symptoms come on very quickly. And you get sick. One day you feel fine, the next day you can't talk. It's because of binary fission, unfortunately. And then the antibiotic medication will hopefully take care of that. All right, so um, the last thing that this chapter is going to cover is cancer, and we will do that in class. And hopefully these videos were helpful. You should probably have some questions. You should have paused periodically or rewound to get the information inside those notes.